Well, good morning, beloved. This is Dr. Tuesday. Thank you so much for viewing my video. Um, let's see. I did my walk and really did not have an opportunity to video while I was on the trail. Um, I had my weights and then I had to listen to an audio uh, of the book that we're studying and Bible study. Lord, change my attitude before it's too late. And I have the privilege of uh, teaching from that book with some of the other teachers uh, there at Healing Stream. So it's a good book. When I started reading it, um, I thought to myself, actually, when I got it, when it was given to me or the topic came up and I was asked to teach, I said, well, I don't have a bad attitude. I don't really complain. I don't talk about people. I don't enter into negative conversations. I mean, we all can at times, and I've certainly been guilty of that, but that's not how I flow, right? But when I started reading this book and now listening to it, I said, Lord, I guess I do have some attitude issues. If y'all can see my eyes underneath there. I was like, what? So it has really been eye-opening. He gave an example about the difference between complaining and expressing a grievance or a genuine concern. So for example, if you are a wife or a husband and you say to your spouse, honey, I really want us to spend more time together. I want us to spend more time with the kids. That's not complaining. That's expressing, and it's a truth. It's what should happen. Our complaining is often about something that should happen, but we don't like it, so we're complaining. It's not the way we want it. And so because it's not the way we want it, we complain. In that, that, that was amazing. Then, but he said complaining would be if you turn around to the kids and say, your, your dad, your mom never spends time with us. You're telling your friend girls or your boys, your wife don't live, my wife ain't never got time for me. My man, my husband, he's always, that's complaining. Isn't that something? Being on an airplane and the food is not uh, to your satisfaction or it's not warm, it's not cold. I mean, it's cold. And so you say to the stewardess, can you warm this up for me? Or I don't prefer um, beef. I, I don't eat beef. Is there something else? That's not complaining. But if you turn to your passenger next to you, I can't believe they're selling this stale beef and this hard bread and this food is cold. That's complaining. If you expect a grievance or, or a report a grievance or concern to a manager or a corporate office because of how your service was or how you were treated, that's not complaining. Because you, there is a right way for you to be treated as a customer. There is a, a right expectation when you're paying two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars for an airplane ticket. Amen. And so, but there's a way to do it. So, wow. And and the complaint of why is this happening to me and what's going on and God don't understand it. It's okay to ask God questions. God ain't tripping on you asking questions. It's Jesus in the garden. Why has thou forsaken me? He asked questions three times that wasn't the issue but he didn't try to force God's hand to get an answer he went on and did what God had commanded him to do nevertheless not my will but your will be done he, he finished out his assignment but when we're complaining why and I don't understand it it's the difference between asking a question because you genuinely want to understand and you're you, you genuinely are broken by something and you're like God help me I don't get it versus God this is wrong why is it, you know, he talked about how, which is, you know, to be transparent, kind of where I'm at at 49 and I haven't had children. I've waited right, waited on my husband. And it, and now I'm at a place that my body may be telling me you may not be able to have children. I certainly understand adoption and things like that. And I'm open to that, just a transparent moment. But I have talked to God like, Lord, what is going on? I don't understand this. And there was a season that I was demanding an answer from God. How could you do this? Other people have, you know, gone on and had children outside of marriage and in their marriage. And they said they didn't even want kids. And you've given them two and three kids, you know. And I've had those conversations. But I'm at a place now that I'm saying, okay, God, not my will, but your will be done. I could adopt. My, my husband could have beautiful children and he allows my heart to receive them. And so... It could be a, a, a more mature gentleman who's ready and mature and God loves God and all of that. And he has adult children and now their children are ready to have children. So I get to be a, a, a glam mom. Amen. So however God wants to do it. But I don't have a complaint in my heart about it anymore because it's truly not my will. But your will be done. And I know he's seen my labor of love and he said he won't forget that. So I want someone to be encouraged today. God has seen your labor of love. Do your best not to complain. Celebrate God and in all things, praise the Lord. It is good. It is good to give thanks. 
even when we don't understand, even when we don't get it, even when it's not the way that we want it. Know that God has a better yes, a greater plan for you. God bless.